Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unmentioned 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be advancing on the previous video we did. However, you don't necessarily need to watch that, but I would recommend it as well just to get the basic fundamentals of this. But what we're going to be doing is changing our progress bar, which changes colors, and just making it so we're going to have a smooth change of colors. So it's going to kind of fade and blend between them. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So again, if I press 1, my health is going to go down, and 2 is going to go up. Now, if we go from green, if we go down, it's going to go to yellow, and you'll see it blended between them. If we go down even further, it's going to go to red, and all the way back up again through these different colors. And again, you can add as many colors as you want. However, last time it was just, it changed immediately. I'll put on screen now what that looked like. But now what's going to happen is it's going to blend between the colors instead of just immediately snapping between them, which was something which somebody asked how to do. So I thought I'd do a video on it because it was such a great idea. So this is what we're setting up and making today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So once again, I'm going to be using the code which we started in the last video and just changing it here and there and adapting onto it. Again, you don't need to watch that video first, but I would recommend it. But again, I'll show you how to do it all in this video. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our player HUD and this is our progress bar where we have all the code for this change in colors. So if we select the progress bar, we can go to the binding which we have already, which I have removed, which you're also going to want to do. Remove the binding where you can hit bind and it's on there. So bind, remove binding. Also, I'm going to press the magnifying glass first to take me to that binding and then we're going to remove it. Compile and save. Go back to the graph and we have this bind here and this is the code we set up last time. So again, when the health is between these different values, we're going to be setting the progress bar to different colors. Again, you can add as many as you want. What we're going to do now is we're going to select part of this code and just change it. So for me, that's going to be all of the greater than and less than the ends and the branches. Control C that, and then we're going to close this. So that's all we need to do in here. Uh, we just need to get the code to change it. And we're now going to open up our character blueprint. So for me, that's content, third person VP, blueprints, third person character, and I'm just going to find some empty space in here, hit Control V to paste it in, like so. And now we have this code in here. Again, this is very easy to make if you haven't done it already. It's just a lot easier for us and more time efficient to copy and paste over since we already have it. Once again, all of these top values need to go into our health. So we're now going to get reference to our health, connecting that into all these top values like we had it set up before, but we're just now in a different blueprint. Because we don't want it to be on the bind because that does it every single tick. And we also can't use a timeline inside of a widget, which is what we need to do in order to make this nice and smooth. So this is what we have so far. I'm going to right click here, add a custom event, naming this check health, and I'm going to connect that into the first branch here, like so. And so this is how we're going to fire off this to check what our current health value is, so we know what to set the color to. I'm going to compile, save, and this is not done yet, however we're going to come back to it in a minute. What we're going to do first is we're going to create a few variables. So we're going to hit the plus variable here and I'm going to name this one current color and as it sounds this wants to be a linear color variable like so because again what we're doing at this is we're going to be setting this to be the current color of the progress bar. Compile, save that. We're going to add another variable with this once again being a linear color. All of the variables we're going to make are linear colors so you don't need to change it anymore and this one is now going to be new color so we now have a reference to what the new color is going to be. Then what we're going to do now is add in all the different variables for the different colors we're going to have. So I'm going to do the same I had last time, which is going to be green, yellow, and red. Set these to whatever you want, and again, do as many as you want as well. But all I'm going to do is create one called green, create one called yellow, and create one called red. If we compile and save, we can now set these different values. So the current and new colors, they're going to be left as empty because we're going to be setting those through code. However, green, yellow, and red, or your actual colors, we do need to set these to have default values because these are going to be referenced to set different colors by using this. We're not going to be setting these via code. So I want this one to obviously be green, and we're also going to make sure we set the alpha to 1. So the RGB is just whatever color you want, and make sure the A or the alpha is 1, so it is not transparent and it's not see-through, it does fully show up. I'm going to press OK there. Then I'm going to do the same for yellow. So again, if I set this to yellow and then press OK, you'll see the first half of it is that transparent PNG background. That's because the alpha needs to be 1. So that's why we're setting it there. And the red, I'm just going to do as red once again. I think something along those lines will be good for me. Again, A as 1. Compile and save that. And now we've got all of our variables set up. 
What we also need to do is actually set up the code for changing these colors and blending between them. So that's not on this check health. Again, we're gonna come back to this. I just copied it over, so we already had it here. So I'm just gonna go above this or to the right of it, let's say, because we have some more space here, maybe even below it, sorry. Uh, let's right click, add a custom event, and I'm gonna name this one change color or change progress bar color or whatever it is which makes sense for you, but this is gonna be fine for me. Out of this, we're going to add a timeline and I'm just gonna name this change color T for timeline, disconnect it from play and go into play from start because every time we call this timeline, we want to make sure we're restarting from the very beginning of the timeline, not from where we last played off. So play from start there and double click this to open it up. Set the length to be how long you want it to take to blend between the two colors. I want it to take about half a second, so 0.5 because the length is done in seconds, I want it to take half a second. Set this to whatever time you want, so it could be even 0.1 or just 1. 0.5 is fine for me. Then we're going to add a float track, and I'm just going to name this one color track. The name doesn't matter too much. Inside of this, we're going to right click, add key to color float with a time of 0 and a value also of 0. Then right click, add another key with a time of the maximum length for you. So for me, that's 0.5. So just set it to what you set the length as up here and the value is one. So we're going from the beginning to the end of the timeline. I'm gonna press these buttons here to make it fit perfectly. So it's now gonna smoothly go between value of zero and value of one. This being our current color, this being our new color is gonna smoothly blend between the two. This will make more sense when we do the rest of the code. Compile, save, and close the timeline. Now you'll see we have this float track coming out here. We can drag out this and get a LERP linear color so again, it's going to take the alpha, which is that track there, going from 0 to 1. But it, what it's going to do is actually go from A to B. A being our current color and B being our new color. So it's going from our current color to our new color on a nice smooth transition like so. So I hope that makes sense. And the return value of this, what we're going to do is get a reference to our widget. So if you haven't already got that, on event begin play where you are creating the widget and adding it to the viewport, also just right click return value and promote it to a variable so you have a reference to it here. Once you've got that, we're again going to drag out of the widget reference and get our progress bar, which for me is just progress bar 80. And out of that, we're going to set the fill color and opacity. Because again, that is now gonna change the color of our progress bar. And you'll notice it is also opacity, which is why we set the opacity or the alpha all the way up to one so we can actually see it. The return value from the LERP is going to go into the in color there. So again, what we're doing is smoothly blending between the current and new color, like so. And after we've finished off this timeline, we want to set the current color to our new color, because we've now fully blended between the two. So we want to update our current color to be what the new color was, like so. So I hope that will make sense as well. So we'll compile and save that. And that is now that part going to be working perfectly. However, we do need to make sure we actually do set the new and current color as well. So let's start off with the new color. So we're now gonna go back to our check health code, which we have here. So this is quite simple. What we want to do is hold down O, left click to get a do once. And we're gonna do that for all of the different colors or the branches which we have. So again, I have three branches, so I've got three do onces. Connect these into the true of the branches like so. And this is because every time we update our health, we're gonna be calling the check health, but we only want to do these once when we actually need to. So if we check the health every time we're in the same bracket here, we only wanna fire this off once, not every single time. Again, that will make more sense later because what it's gonna do is call this timeline and it's gonna constantly blend it every time we change our health, even if the color doesn't need to change. So that's why we have these here. But we also need a way to reset these. Now the most efficient way I found is using custom events. So I'm gonna right click, add a custom event, naming this reset one. For the reset, do once one, or reset first, do once here. Whatever name it makes the most sense for you, but this works perfectly for me. And we're gonna connect that into the reset there. Then add another custom event, naming this reset two, connecting it into the reset of the second do once. And last but not least, you guessed it, custom event reset three, connecting this into the reset of the third one. And again, do this for as many different do onces and colors that you have. Then let's go back to the first do once. Off of completed, what we want to do is make sure we can reset the second and third one. Because we're now in this color, this is now activated as our do once. 
but we need to reset these ones so we do change to be in a different bracket we now have access to these different brackets like so so out completed we're going to reset two because again we don't want to reset the first one because we're now in this one we want to reset the second and third so reset two and also reset three then on the second one down here we want to reset one and also reset three so again i hope all of this makes sense you can just use sequences and connect them all up but that gets to be quite a messy spaghetti code so this works a lot better and on the third one it's reset one and reset two like so and now we have it working so we're only going to be doing this once so it's the most efficient way possible now the more simple part actually setting our colors so for me the top one this is full health so this is going to be green so i'm going to set new color and i'm going to set it to green using the variables we created earlier then under this i'm going to set new color and the middle amount of health for me is going to be yellow and underneath this set new color with this one going to be red again set these up to be the colors which you want and you chose then we're going to drag out of one of these and call custom event or call function change color which is the custom event we made earlier for this timeline here like so and that is going to connect up into all of these like this so whenever we do want to change the color we are actually going to do that through this timeline as well so we'll compile and save that and that is now working perfectly for us to set the new color in order for us to actually blend between them but we also need to set the current color now again that is going to be doing this when we finish changing however we do need to set it up for the first one as well so the first time we play this we're not going to have a current color so we can just set this here however it might change if you have a save game or something so we're going to have this based upon the player's health so what we're going to do is select the first part of our check health which is the health all of the different less than greater than and branches like this Control c to copy that and then we're going to go up to event begin play and hit Control v to paste it here connecting that into the add to view port or just whatever it is that you have on event begin play now instead of doing set new color we're going to set the current color so we can just select all of these at the very end like so Control c Control v to paste it up here we don't need the do onces because this is only going to do it once anyway because it is on event begin play so this is the code we have now but again you'll notice this is for the new color we want it to be for the current color so what we can do is we can just drag current color onto the set and you'll see it says change node to write current color drop it on there and we've now changed it to be current instead of new we'll compile and save that and so now we've got the current color and the new color set up in order to blend between them the only thing left to do now is to actually call the check health function so again make sure you do this when you take damage and heal as well so whenever your health changes call this function here again very simply all i've got is pressed on one and two i'm decreasing or increasing the health but you will probably have a proper system set up for damaging and healing and if you do make sure to set this up there but all you want to do is call function check health like so and again i'm just going to connect it into both of these like that compile save and that should now be the code done and working perfectly for us so let's hit play to test this out you see that my health is currently all the way down there so let me just check is that what that should be it shouldn't because my health is set to 100 so let's have a look at why it's done that we'll go open up our widget and if i select the progress bar our percent is not bind anymore so that's the problem i removed the wrong binding i did that earlier as well I'm just misreading so you probably won't have this problem but again on the fill color and opacity make sure you have removed that binding but on the progress you've still got the get percent binding compile save hit play and you'll see that this now works perfectly so again that was my mistake i just removed the wrong binding if i were to hit one you'll see my health has gone down hit two it's gone up you'll also notice actually that was blue instead of green so once again that's now a problem in here on event begin play it didn't actually set the current color to what it should be and i'll tell you why it's because we set the current color but this actually has nothing to do with the progress bar at the moment so this is going to work for blending however it's not going to work for the actual progress bar just yet so i did miss one important final feature what we need to do is get our widget reference here drag out and once again get the progress bar and out of this again set the fill color and opacity like so then connecting this into all of the set current colors like so so again once we set the color we're going to actually set it in the widget as well for the progress bar 
the end color is just going to be our current color variable we have there. If we compile, save, and hit play, you'll see that is now working perfect for us. It is green. Press 1, it goes down. Press 2, it goes up, so that still works. If you press 1 and go down far enough, you'll see that it's going to blend between green to yellow. Go down even further, it's now going to go to red. Back up, yellow, back up even further, green. So this now works perfectly. It's just an addition onto what we did last time. So instead of just changing the colors immediately, we're now blending between them nice and smoothly, which looks a lot better. So I think that'll be it for this video. So we've done everything we want to do. Again, I've just gone over it there, but what we're doing is smoothly blending between different colors on our progress bar. So the color is gonna be changing based upon our health, which again, we did in the previous video as well, but just advanced and expanded upon it today to make it look a lot better. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you did find it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.